Hello and welcome to this video on R Markdown. In this video, we will create a report which consists of charts and tables and the output would be in Microsoft Word. So the first step would be to install the Office Down package. Go to the Packages tab and install the package. So once we have the package, go to the file and say New File and click on R Markdown. And go to the From Templates option and you would find the advanced Word document. Click on OK and you will get this document. So the template already has some code to draw some charts and tables and we are going to knit it. Give it a name. And click on Save. And once it's done its work, we are going to get this Word document which already has some charts and tables. So let's keep our demo simple. I'm going to delete all that code. So we only have the first section which is the setup section. And now we'll start adding our own code bit by bit. Now let's add some headers into our document. So I'm going to use a single hash which is a header 1, some text below that and then another header which will be our header 2 with two hashes in the front and some text under that and the third header. So you can see we have three headers now and I'm going to introduce an R chunk there where we can write our code. So I'm going to write some code to plot a simple chart there. So here is our code for the first chart. Notice that I've actually put a comment there which is not going to appear in the final output. So if I save it and knit it, we're going to end up with a Word document which has our introductory text, the first header, second header and the third header and then you have a chart there. Now let's add another R chunk in there. And on top of that R chunk, I want to introduce some text also. So I'm just going to have a text which is a header 3. You can see 3 hashes there and then a bit of a text under that. This time I want to control the figure height and figure width. So I've given figure height and figure width as 7 inches. By default, it's in inches. And now I'm going to copy the code from the previous chunk to this one. But I'm going to move this common code which is the library or the package command to a common area. So I'll move it under this chunk. So this way we won't have to repeat all these common commands again and again for each chunk. Now going back to this, if I save it and knit it, we would see two charts in our Word document. The first one is the standard size without any changes and the second one is 7 inches by 7 inches. If you look at the Word document, you would see that we also have the, the code for each chunk. When we run the code, it actually displays the, the code as well. So we can hide that by simply saying echo equals false. So I'm going to the code chunk for the first chart and say echo equals false. And if I run or knit this chart uh, document again, you would notice that the first chart will not have the code. Whereas the second chart does have the code because echo equals false is not there in the second chunk. We can choose to control certain things at a global level by defining it here in this setup area. So I can say echo equals false and this is going to work for all the code chunks. So none of the codes, code chunks would display the code anymore. So you can see that both the charts don't have the code section there. Apart from the echo equals false, we can also control other information. For example, I can remove my figure height and figure width from this code chunk and can control it globally by putting it up there so that all the charts would have the same height and the same width. So let me reformat it in a better way. I can also add 
the DPI or the dots per inch equals 300. By default, it is 72. So it's always good to add DPI equals 300. So the chart resolutions are better, especially in the Word documents. So if I run or need this document again, we would notice that none of the charts are displaying the code anymore and the DPI is 300. So let's create a table in our report now. And I always tend to use the flex table, especially for the Word documents, because it seems to be doing what I need it to do most of the time. So everybody has their preferred package, but I use flex table all the time. Of course, I can move this library flex table command to the common setup area at the top later on. And if I knit it, we should get a simple table. Okay, table is there, but you notice there is a problem. It's actually going out of the bounds. So we can fix that by doing an auto fit command. I'll introduce another code chunk. Put some comments at the top. And I'll be using the dplyr package or library. And then use the auto fit command from the flex table. And if I run it now, you would notice that we have two tables. One which is going out of bounds and the other one which is properly formatted and shown completely. So that seems to be working okay. But we have a problem. We have this commands in the red. So we need to hide that also. So I can go to the top and add more commands there. Warning equals false. Comment equals false. and message equals false. So hopefully this should do the trick. Let's save it and knit it. So those comments and warnings have now gone. Let's move these packages commands or library command to the top. Okay, now let's try to introduce a table of contents at the top of the page. And we will have a brand new page first by using the backslash new page command. And then under that we have the command for creating the table of contents which is called block underscore talk. And if I knit it, you would see that we have a table of contents in a brand new page. And now we can try adding the captions to our tables. So tab.cap, whatever is within that uh, quotes would be printed under the table. And then you can also give an ID to each table, which has to be unique. So now we can have a separate page for our table of contents or the list of tables. And this is the command for that. Similarly, we can also give the captions to each figure and also an ID to each figure, which has to be unique. So this is my first scatter plot. And I can copy the same code to my second chart. I'm just making some changes to our second chart just by adding some color. and then changing the caption. Now this figure ID has to be unique. So we have given a different name to this. So if we execute the command now by knitting it, we would have three tables. One is the table of contents, list of tables, and then list of figures. As you can see that each figure has a caption And list of figures have the proper page numbers for that as well. So I hope you found this information useful and practical. Thank you very much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.